Welcome back to the channel Hex Tribe. In this video, I'm going to be telling you the ultimate Hex staking strategy guide for 2023. So if you're newer to Hex, this video is definitely for you. Now you might have seen my other videos about how to buy Hex, see that up above, or maybe you read my article, link in description below, and now you have some Hex in your wallet. So this video is assuming you already have purchased some Hex and now you want to use it for its primary purpose, which is staking. But how do you go about that? Because there's a lot of different nuances and strategies and places to stake. We're going to talk about all of it, so stick around till the end, because this video is your one-stop shop to everything you will ever need to know when it comes to staking Hex. And there's a lot to it, but it's really as simple or complex as you want to make it. So if you haven't heard by now, the real way that people are actually winning in crypto and making passive income and sometimes generational wealth is through staking Hex. Not simply just buying and holding it, but the staking feature is great because it saves yourself from yourself. It allows you to lock up your coins and get paid to do so. In terms of more hex of course so that's rule number one this might be obvious to a lot of you but hex stakes simply earn yield in terms of more hex when your stake term is over but if you want to do hex the right way you're going to want to learn everything you can about staking hex not simply buying it so again i'm assuming you have a metamask wallet i'm assuming you have a centralized exchange like kraken or coinbase that you're using to fund that metamask wallet and again, I've already explained the whole buying process, so if you haven't watched those videos already and you're brand new to Hex and Crypto, check out those videos first because obviously you need Hex first. But let's get into staking, guys. A lot of people often ask where to go to stake Hex. So where do you stake your Hex? Well, there's a lot of different options. That's the really cool thing about Hex is that it's decentralized, right? Which means although there's only one underlying smart contract, there's a lot of different front ends or UIs, you know, user interfaces, that you can go to stake hacks. Basically, there's just a bunch of different websites for redundancy and security and all that. Now, the one I'm gonna be covering mostly in this video is go.hex.com. That's the one you see right in front of you here. This is the OG original hex staking dashboard. It's my personal favorite because it has the most detailed information and statistics. And really, you can use this alone and have everything you need when it comes to staking hacks. But there's also a couple of other options that I wanna run through really quick in terms of where to stake your hex. And a lot of these staking front ends, right, they're just different websites. They all have something a little bit different about them and they all have some interesting functionality that you might find useful at certain points. Another option you could use is called backuphex.com. Now backuphex is cool, it's basically just what it sounds like, a backup version of go.hex.com. It's a staking dashboard, but this one does give you the ability to run good accounting, not only for yourself, but for other people. Now we're gonna explain what good accounting is in a minute, so stick with me here. Another cool feature about backuphex.com is, is that it has a tool to pick and choose and see which days you should end your stake where there's less competition. Basically, which days you can end a stake with the lowest risk of other people ending their stake on the same day and potentially dumping their coins, you know, right before you do. Another good backup is called go.tshare.app. This one's a bit more mobile friendly. And when it comes to mobile friendly, my favorite mobile wallet is this one right here, gostaker.com. This is my absolute favorite for mobile and you don't even have to use it as a wallet. So I personally don't use gostaker.com as a staking front end or a wallet. I use it simply as a visualization tool because it allows you to compile all your addresses in one place and see a bunch of really cool statistics and also track when your stakes are coming due. You could even set notifications on your phone so that you don't forget to end your stake when it's due. Plus V2 for ghostaker.com is right around the corner. So that's gonna look beautiful. You could tell by this website here, they're making some serious UI updates. It's gonna look very professional, very beautiful, and just be jam packed with cool features. So whether or not you actually want to use ghostaker.com for staking purposes, or simply just to visualize all your stakes in one place, you know, to see the progress and to see the ranking system where you stack up with other people. There's so many cool things about ghostaker.com that I recommend downloading this app if you plan on staking hex just, if nothing else, as a visualizer for all your stakes. Next, we've got apphex.win. This is just a nice front end that's very mobile friendly, uh, just a good backup. And then after that, we've got app.icosa.pro. Now, links for all these are going to be in the description below, so don't worry, guys. But app.icosa.pro is particularly interesting because it allows you to unlock a free token that you get just for staking your hex. It's called Hedron. So... Every day as a hex staker that you stake hex, you get a secondary token that somebody else made called Hedron. This is a nice way to take advantage of that because this front end is exactly like go.hex.com, but it also lets you mint your Hedron. And we're going to get into all this later near the end, okay? But this is just a nice little additional perk for when you're a hex staker, you also get to mint this additional coin 
that accrues every day of your stake term that you serve in hex staking. And finally, guys, as a very last resort, I know we just talked about six different front ends, but as a seventh option, you've always got etherscan.io. So etherscan.io, you just go to the website, look up hex in the address bar here, and click on the contract button down here, and you can always, as a last resort, start stakes and end stakes by clicking these buttons down here and running the functions directly from the smart contract. It's a bit more complicated. I don't really ever use this, but it's always here as a last resort. So the primary two we're going to be talking about today are again app.icosa.pro because of that hedron mintability and then go.hex.com which is really just my favorite one-stop shop. It's kind of my central hub where I do all my staking, ending stakes, and all that stuff. Now any of these front ends works fine because what you have to realize is that when you stake hex it doesn't matter what front end you use as long as that front end, that website, that UI, whatever you want to call it, as long as it's pointed to the Hex smart contract on the blockchain, it's just reading data from the blockchain and it's just presenting it to you in a way that you might find more or less visually appealing. But again, we're going to stick with go.hex.com. It's just the original and it's my favorite. So the next thing a lot of people often ask is how to stake Hex. And when you're asking how to stake Hex, that's actually a two-part question. So there's how to start a stake and how to end a stake. Let's begin with how to start a Hex stake. Starting a hex stake is very, very simple. There's only two fields that you need to worry about that you need to plan for. Only two things, guys. Two things, very simple. How much hex you want to stake and how long you want to stake it for. And again, if you don't already know this, staking in hex is completely optional. You don't have to stake at all. But as a hex staker, you're getting all the inflation of the coin. Whereas keeping your hex liquid is virtually lending value to all of the hex stakers because they're holding the price up by taking their coins off the table, staking them to earn yield in the form of inflation, whereas the non-stakers are getting slowly diluted little by little every day, but they have the privilege to sell, right? They have the privilege to sell, whereas stakers have the privilege of making yield and getting all that inflation and not experiencing any of the negative effects from that inflation. So anyway, how much hex you want to stake goes in this field and how long you want to stake in days goes in this field. So in hex, we measure time by days. That's very important. You'll see in the top right corner. We're currently on day 1106, 1106, meaning Hex has been alive for just over three years now, running flawlessly, 100% uptime. But yeah, Hex is measured in days. And you can see I've got a little bit of Hex here. All you need to determine is, let's say, I want to stake 10 Hex for 100 days. Pretty simple, right? Let's make it a little bit longer. Let's make it 1,000 days. And once I'm sure about that, once I'm absolutely sure, I click Stake. And this will pull up my MetaMask account automatically. You don't have to worry about anything. I just scroll down and confirm. I pay the Ethereum gas fee because remember, you have to have ETH left over in your MetaMask wallet in order to do anything on the Ethereum blockchain, not just hex related, anything at all. So you need that leftover Ethereum to pay for that $1.70 right now for gas fees. I'm not going to do that right now, but that's just an example. Stake, pull up MetaMask, confirm. And you're going to see a pending stake right down here, just like I did earlier today. So you could see after that stake gets confirmed on the blockchain, you'll have it pending in this bar right here. And when the day takes over in UTC time, so depending on where you are in the world, look up UTC time. That's just the computer's way of measuring every day. For me, UTC time is at about 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. every day. So by the time it's 7 p.m. today, you know, the day will tick over and this stake will go from pending to active. Okay, so it's grayed out right now, but in one more computer day, it's going to look just like all of these other stakes. Okay, and then it's going to start earning me yield every single day. Now, you can also click max if you want to just stake all of your hex. I mean, think very carefully about that, of course. And you can also click this calendar button if you want a nice visual representation of when your stake is actually coming due on the calendar. So right now you can see a thousand days is actually ending on September 2025, September 7th to be exact. Now if I want to zoom out and scroll by months or even years, I can click on September right here and that'll zoom me out to the monthly view. So here I can pick whatever month I want and if I click on the year button, it zooms me out to the yearly view. So if you want to make those longer term stakes, which is where the real interest starts adding up and you really start seeing some potentially amazing returns in the future. You can scroll up to, you know, 2033, May 28th, and that's much easier than just, you know, clicking this button over and over and over again, right? Or having to guess, you know, how many days is May 28th in the future, right? You don't really need to know the number of days. You can just click on the calendar, 
I love the calendar. It makes things a lot easier. So that's how you start a stake, guys. Two things, very simple. How much hex you want to stake, how many days you want to stake it for, and then you very simply just click the button, click confirm, and you're good. Now, how do you end a stake? The next part is how do you end a hex stake? This is very, very important. And you can see down here, I've got a list of a couple test stakes, okay? And you can see that most of them have a red button. Most of them have a red button because I haven't served the total number of days that I committed to. And when you make a hex stake, it's a commitment with yourself. It's a commitment with the smart contract between you and yourself. You didn't have to do it, but if you chose to do it, you should probably make sure that you are actually fulfilling all the days that you said you were going to do. You should probably make sure you're serving all those days because unlike a lot of staking protocols in crypto, Hex is what I like to call staking with consequences. So there are heavy penalties for end staking late and end staking early. So when it comes to how to end a hex stake, really, really simple guys, don't be late and don't be early. Now being early is much worse than being late, depending on how many days you've served. For example, if you stake for a thousand days and you end your stake after two days because you don't know what you're doing, you're going to lose all your money. Straight up, you will lose all your money and I don't want that to happen to you. So you can see when the button is red, that just means that I haven't committed, I haven't served all my days that I committed to. All right, so if I try to end the stake, a big flashy warning sign is going to come up and it's going to say, hey, are you sure you want to do that? Are you sure you know what you're doing here? And even if you were to fat finger it, you'd have to accidentally press this red button again and then accidentally press confirm on your MetaMask. So you'd have to trip fall and accidentally push three buttons if you were emergency ending your stake by accident. So there's really no accidents here. When you end your stake early, you know what you're doing. Okay, you read this warning message, you'd have to click it again. You'd basically have to triple confirm that you really want to end your stake. And I don't ever recommend that anybody do this. It's for advanced users only. And because this is an advanced guide, I'm going to show you guys about why an advanced user might want to end a stake. But I, again, I really don't recommend you do that. Just keep things simple and don't do that. But when a stake is due, this red button will turn to black, like this button right here. So today, my stake ended on day 1106. And you can see all the stats. You know, I earned a very, very small amount of yield because I only staked for one day. And I can choose to end my stake. So here is where I can safely end my stake, or I could also run the good accounting function. Now, the majority of the time, you're just going to want to go ahead and end your stake. There's really no point in waiting most of the time. Uh, again, don't do it early. Don't do it late. But when your stake is due, you do get a 14 day grace period where you are not penalized. So if you, if your stake is due and you're on a vacation and you're saying, Oh crap, I got to get home. That's okay. Because you have two weeks without incurring any late penalties. Cause remember there's early end stake penalties and there's also late end stake penalties. The late end stake penalties are very easy to explain after that two week grace period, where again, you have two weeks to remember. But after those two weeks, your stakes value slowly bleeds out at 1% per week for the next 100 weeks. So after approximately two years of ignoring the stake and doing nothing at all, your stake will completely bleed out and all that hex will be lost. And fun fact, actually, all that hex that is incurred from penalties, either early or late penalties, actually gets routed back to the stakers, the staking class, because it's a way to reward, you know, long-term diamond hands holders from people that obviously didn't care. You know, they didn't care enough to read the rules or they didn't care enough to check on their stake when it was due. So all the penalties just get paid right back to the people that are staking. So that's pretty cool, but it's pretty simple guys. Don't be early. Don't be late. Again, you can use that staker app, that GoStaker.com app that I talked about earlier as a way to set reminders for when your stakes are coming due, or you can just mark it on your Google calendar, right? Like it's not that hard. I mean, this is money we're talking about. So, you know, if you have an important financial thing coming up, you should probably just mark it on your calendar. Do whatever you have to so that you don't forget. But it's also pretty hard to forget for two years. You know what I mean? So, you know, if you really did forget for two years and it bled out slowly at 1% per week for 50, for 100 weeks rather, you know, that's pretty bad, right? You obviously just forgot or didn't care. Now on the screen in front of you, if you want to actually calculate how the early end stake penalties work, I'm going to put an image right here just so that you can know if you're an advanced user and if you're actually interested in emergency ending your stake, you should know just how much hex you are going to lose. So it's kind of complex. As you can see on the screen in front of you here, there's different you know ways of calculating your penalty for stakes lower than 180 days and higher than 180 days. A good rule of thumb is that if you complete less than 50% of your stake, 
you're going to get penalized out of your principal, meaning out of the amount that you initially put in versus if you serve longer than 50% of your stake, you'll get all your principal back, but you'll only get penalized out of your interest earned, you know, proportional to how much you completed after that 50% mark. But of course, there's also a risk that if you do it even too early, right? If you do it too early, you could potentially nuke your entire stake and not get anything back at all. For example, if you stake for 10 years and you end your stake after one day, you're not getting jack, okay? You're not getting anything. So again, don't be early, don't be late, but this image right here explains the emergency end stake penalties for early ending stake, okay? Now, you might have noticed another button. This is the last part of when it comes to ending a stake. This is the last thing you need to know. There's a function called good accounting. Now, why might somebody want to press good accounting? Well, the cool thing about good accounting is that it ends your stake meaning you don't incur any more late penalties, but it doesn't actually mint your hex back to you and go in your wallet. Now, there's certain reasons why people might want to do this. There might be, you know, tax advantages. Let's say your stake ends on December 29th, but you want it, but you want to receive it on January 1st, you know, so that you get it during the new year. Um, and the cool thing about good accounting is that you can actually run it for other people too. So let's say you've got a buddy that's taking their hex and something bad happens to them or, you know, God forbid they go to prison or, you know, there's other examples of where this might be useful. But if somebody you know is not able to reach their hex stake in time, other people can go ahead and run the good accounting function on those people's stakes so that the stakes don't bleed out. And again, it stops the stake from bleeding out, but it doesn't actually mint the hex back again until, you know, people are ready. The actual user is ready to mint their hex and only the user can end the stake and mint the hex back to their wallet. But if you want to run good accounting for someone else, you can basically just stop the bleeding, okay? Now on go.hex.com, you can only run good accounting for yourself. But as a little life hack here, if you go to backuphex.com, remember I talked about that added feature. On backuphex.com, on the expiring stakes tab, you can go ahead and run good accounting for anybody, right? This button over here is good accounting. And you can run that good accounting function for anybody as long as you just copy and paste their address and maybe put it into the filter field here. But we're not going to do that right now. So that was how to stake hex. And another question people ask me a lot is how long should I stake hex? And to that I say, obviously I don't ever give financial advice. My goal is to teach people how to think for themselves. So you need to take responsibility for your own actions when it comes to hex staking. And that's also the cool thing because self-sovereignty is literally very powerful in your life. So how long should you stake hex? That's a question only you can answer. Only you can answer that. And I'll give you some tips that I personally use when it comes to my own staking. But the length of time depends on so many things. There's no one size fits all, guys. It's a one size fits one policy because your lifestyle is different than mine. You might be older or younger than me. You might have a shorter time preference or a longer time preference. Who knows, right? You might be saving up for a new car in two more years or you might be planning on buying a house in five more years. Or maybe you're 100 years old and you don't know how much longer you're going to be around for. Maybe you uh, don't want to stake 15 years if you're already 100 years old. But a couple of quick tips when it comes to how long to stake is I never like to do anything shorter than one year. Now, why? Well, number one, in the USA at least, we have long-term capital gains and short-term capital gains. And obviously, guys, the goal of crypto is to make money one day. So when we plan on actually cashing out one day... It's more preferable, at least in the US, to have long-term capital gains. Long-term gains are usually lower than short-term gains. And so in order to incur long-term gains, you have to have held an asset for a minimum of one year. So I say, why not? You know, why wouldn't you want to just at least ver the very minimum hold for one year? Because one year in the grand scheme of your life is kind of like the blink of an eye. It goes by a lot faster than you think. And if you don't have a time horizon for at least one year or longer, then Hex might not be for you. Okay, Hex is a long-term investing strategy game. It's a months and years game, not a days and weeks game. In Hex, we speak out very loudly against trading, day trading, and these other things like leverage trading that destroy people's lives, okay? With trading, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. You're going to lose money sooner or later. Long-term investing is a positive sum game. Value creation is a positive sum game where we can all win together if your time horizon is long enough. And a lot of people don't want to hear that, but that's really the best thing I could tell you guys is that delayed gratification in crypto and in life in general always wins. So try to go longer than 365 days if you can. And if you can't, try to think about maybe why is your time preference so short.
So I like a minimum of one year and I also like to do more than one stake. So this is probably obvious to a lot of you, but yes, in Hex, you can make more than one stake. You can make as many stakes as you want. And so I like to make a lot of different stakes ending at different various points in the future. And another reason I like to do that is because, for example, right now we're in the bottom of a bear market. We're in the bottom of a brutal bear market. So not only do I want to pay long-term capital gains tax over short term, but why wouldn't I want to just get paid to wait out the bear market? You know, I don't want to sell at the bottom anyway. I don't like selling the bottoms of anything. The bottoms are usually the time to buy, right? Buy the dip, as they say. So not only are there some potential tax advantages, but you also get paid to wait out the bear market in style, right? You can get paid right now. A one year stake goes for about 10 to 11% APY and it gradually scales up because longer stakes pay higher APY. If you make a two or three year stake and you know, the bull market might be back in full swing by then. Well, congratulations. Not only did you save yourself from yourself because you didn't shake yourself out because you locked your coins up and you committed to holding them, but you also have a big stack of interest, right? That offsets any of your potential losses right now in the near term. And if prices come back, like a lot of us expect them to come back in a couple of years, well, congratulations, you earned all that a price appreciation, plus you earned all that yield on top of however high the price went up. It's a win-win, you know what I mean? Next, a lot of people ask how much hex should they stake? And to that, I also say, you need to think about that for yourself. Only you can answer that question of how much hex you should stake. Now, me personally, when it comes to how much hex should I stake, I like to make stakes of, you know, about one T-share if I can. And right now, why I say that is because one T-share today is cheaper than it's been in a long time in USD value terms. But T-shares, and guys, if you don't know how shares work, go ahead and watch my video. I'll post it above. That's a whole nother video. I'll also talk a little bit more about shares later. But for now, all I'll say about shares is that longer pays better and bigger pays better when it comes to shares. And the price of shares in hex terms goes up every day. What do shares do? They tell you, they basically dictate how much yield you will get in the system. And I like when it comes to how much hex should I stake, I like to make sure I'm always staking, you know, about one T-share at least. Now, if you can't afford one T-share, maybe half a T-share, maybe a quarter of a T-share, but try to do as much as you can to get a significant amount of T-shares because that just stands for a trillion shares, by the way. And guys, hover your mouse over these question mark icons it really will help you answer a lot of questions. Just read the website. You're going to understand so much more than everybody else if you just take some time to read. But I just said a lot there. So Hex shares go up in Hex terms every day, but Hex itself goes up and down in USD value all the time. So look at this chart over here. This is a chart of the Hex T-share price in USD. You can see it mostly goes up and it also goes down because the price of Hex affects it a lot. But you will never see this Hex value here be lower than it is right now today. This number only goes up in hex terms. So shares get more and more expensive, meaning I like to make sure I'm locking in a certain number of T shares because I know they're always going to be more expensive in the future. Now we're going to come back to shares and bonuses at the end of the video. But when it comes to the simple question of how much hex to stake, I like to have, you know, a certain number of whole digit T shares because right now one T share today, is about $700. Guys, if you can scrounge up $700 from working at your day job, that's a pretty nice amount to put into a hex stake, in my humble opinion. And if that doesn't work out for you, if you don't like thinking in shares, you can do what I did early on. You know, I really tried to make it simple for myself when I was staking hex, and I just imagined every hex being $1. And I still do to this day. I still, over and over in my head, I visualize hex being $1 because it's not really that far-fetched. Hex hit 50 cents in the top of the last bull market. And the next bull market, you know, so a lot of people think $1 sounds conservative, right? So imagine Hex being $1 and today you could buy them for three cents. If you were able to buy dollars for three pennies each, you know, how many dollars, how many future dollars would you want to buy, right? If I want to buy 10,000 Hex today and I want to stake 10,000 Hex, well, today, what is that? 300 bucks. Whereas in the future, it could be $10,000. Uh, that sounds like a good idea to me. But again, how much hex you should stake is totally personal, totally up to you. I'm just telling you what I visualize personally. Next, people ask when to stake hex. And that's a really simple answer, guys. When you should stake your hex is always last week. You know, you should have always staked your hex yesterday. And I'm, I'm being facetious, of course, but it's always a better idea in terms of the share price to stake hex earlier and not later. 
Now, I'll link a video right above me here explaining all about Hex shares and how they work. If you want to go more in depth on that, just know that it's usually not a better idea to wait to stake your Hex. The moment you have enough Hex to the point where you want to create a stake with that, there's really no, no sense in waiting because this share price is always going up every day. So your ability to generate a higher yield, basically, long story short, your ability to generate a higher yield goes down little by little, ever so slightly every day. So once you have your hexed amount that you choose to stake and you're happy with that, and you know how long you're going to stake it, don't ask when you should stake your hex. Just go ahead and, and do it you know, as soon as you can. Otherwise, just know that you'll be getting ever so slightly, yes, less yield as the days go on. Now, finally, guys, the ultimate hex staking strategy that's working for thousands of people today. I've already taught you about how, when, where, why, all that stuff, how to stake. But what's the strategy here? The strategy is very simple, actually, and it's called the staking ladder. If you haven't heard of it, it's very similar to a CD ladder in the real world. And for those people that don't know what a CD ladder is, uh, you can Google it. I highly recommend just Googling CD ladder, but I'll try to give you a visual representation of it here, right? You don't have to make one stake. We already know this. We've established this. Instead, what a lot of people do, myself included, I love the staking ladder strategy. I do this for myself personally is you can go ahead and make a stake on even increments or uneven. It doesn't matter. You can just incrementally make more and more stakes from now until the maximum length of time, which in Hex, the maximum length you can stake is 15.2 years, otherwise known as 555 days, right? Any more days than this, and I'm not able to, right? So I like to take that span of anywhere from one year in the future to 15.2 years in the future, and I just like to make a lot of stakes and you can do this however you want you know you could stake every day on your birthday uh for the next you know 15 years you could stake every day on christmas you could do both christmas and your birthday you know it doesn't matter it's free it's totally your choice but you could see here the red and yellow rectangles represent the principal the original amount of hex that you put into your stake whereas the green represents the interest or the yield that you're getting when your stake is up and although the yield on the earlier stakes aren't going to be as high, the yield on the later stakes are going to be very, very, very high <laughs> compared to the yield on the earlier stakes. And what you can do is that, let's say you served one year of time and this stake is now due, you can scrape off the interest, you can sell the little bit of interest you got, and you can restake the principal all the way into the future. So after you serve that year, you can take out a little bit of profits, right? You could sell this. But you don't have to sell the whole thing, right? You don't want to kill the golden goose, which is laying you all the golden eggs. Basically, you don't want to ruin your, your money printing machine. And then you can relaunch this principle and stake that all the way into the future and make a maximum length stake and do this in perpetuity, right? So every time a stake is due, you can sell some of the interest or all of it or any number. You, you can do whatever you want, right? But it's good to have options and it's good to have what I call a perpetual passive income machine. So that it doesn't matter. You don't have to time the bull market or the bear market. If you stagger your stakes, so you've always got something coming out, you're always going to have a stake coming due and you can always then decide, do I need to sell any of it? If so, how much do I want to sell? And if, if I don't want to sell any of it, maybe I just restake the whole thing. But at least you have all these money printing machines just working for you, printing more and more hex every day, little by little. And if you just sell the interest and restake the principal or any variation of that, you know, you'll always have something to look forward to coming up in the near future. So that is the staking ladder strategy in a nutshell. And now I want to show you a nice tool on apphex.win. Again, all these links are in the description below. There's so many useful links and tools for hacks, but apphex.win slash charts lets you visualize your staking ladder on a scale. So look down here. So all you would have to do to visualize your hex staking ladder is copy and paste your Ethereum address from MetaMask right into this field here. Just copy paste it and it will show up down here. So you can see I pulled a couple of random peoples. These are just random Ethereum addresses. These aren't mine. These are, you know, I, I have no idea who the, who's these are. But for example, this person made a staking ladder that looks kind of like this. They've got relatively even stakes coming due every year. It's kind of staggered, you know, there's no it's not that even, but then they've got huge ones in 2030, and then they've got a huge one in 2025. It looks like maybe they think the bull market will be back in 2025, and maybe they think we'll have another bull market in 2030. And you could see that they've laddered all the way up as high as 2037, right? That's a 15-year stake. You see this other guy over here, 
uh, his letter looks a little bit different and to each their own, right? Your letter can look however you want it to look, but this is a nice visualizer tool because I like to use this tool to see where are there are a lot of gaps in my ladders. And then I like to try to fill in the gaps. So this guy's got a big gap between 25 and 27. Maybe he'll want to make a stake in 2026 because there's a big gap here, right? And you could do this however much you want. Now, how often should you make your rungs in your staking ladder? That's up to you. But personally, guys, my my personal favorite is I like to start off yearly and then go biannually and fill them in biannually, which means every six months. And then maybe, you know, if I have extra money, I like to fill them in quarterly every three months. I don't really like to go monthly and I especially don't like to go any lower than monthly. Uh, monthly and lower stakes, they tend to just be, number one, it's like a full-time job. You've always got to worry about ending your stake, getting out your computer, planning what you're going to do with it. But number two, if you make your stakes really small, but you make a ton of them, let's say you make small stakes every week. I've seen people do this. Guys, in the early days of Hex, some people try this. Some people even did daily stakes, which was just absurd. And now they're priced out due to the gas fees. So imagine if your stake never even made you enough interest to account for the gas fees that you have to pay for ending that stake. That's not good. Right? That's not profitable at all. So in Hex, in investing, in life in general, longer term thinkers usually win. Delayed gratification is usually a good strategy. So try not to get too short term with these Hex stakes, right? I prefer yearly, biannually, quarterly. I don't typically go much lower than quarterly. All right, now we're gonna talk about a few hex staking tips. After you learn these tips, you're gonna be ahead of the curve when it comes to hex staking. These are some advanced tips, and again, they're totally optional, but you just will have a little bit of an edge when it comes to staking hex and investing in crypto. The first tip is, remember that token I talked about called Hedron at the very beginning? So once you have a hex stake set up, or multiple hex stakes set up, right? Your ladder, let's say, let's say your ladder is totally finished. You're going to want to go to app.icosa.pro, link in description below, to mint your Hedron, which accrues little by little every single day. So every day you can mint Hedron. Now, I don't recommend that you just log in and mint your Hedron every single day. I mean, that's a little too repetitive, right? And it's, it's boring and it costs a gas fee. So you can mint Hedron, but it costs a gas fee. So if you're only minting like $5 worth of Hedron every day, but it costs you $4 of gas, for example, to mint your Hedron, probably not worth it, right? You might as well just wait a couple hundred days, maybe 200, 300 days, and then mint all your Hedron in one go, in one lump sum. But it's easy to do on this dashboard here because you can see all of your stakes just like they were on go.hex.com. These are the same exact stakes, but you can go to actions and then mint Hedron. And you can see this stake right here. It was only a one day stake, right? Only a test stake but it earned me 2.73 Hedron. And I can mint that if I want, but guys, 2.73 Hedron is worth almost nothing. So the gas fee is likely gonna be more expensive than what the value this Hedron is actually worth in USD. I'm just using very small stake amounts for the example's sake. You would just mint your Hedron, pop up MetaMask, and again, see it's two bucks to unstake. This Hedron right here is worth far lower than $2. So the bigger amounts, this will start to be another passive income machine for you. Okay, just another nice way of making revenue on the side. Another tip is, you know, I also like to stake for special days in my life, right? I like to stake for my birthday. Let's say my birthday is on, you know, May 8th. I could make my stakes on May 8th every single year for my whole entirety of my ladder, just because it gives me something to look forward to. And that could go for any big life event too. Let's say you're gonna buy a wedding ring for your significant other. Let's say you want to buy a new car or maybe an RV for, you know, the RV life. Maybe you want to save up for your kid's college fund. Maybe you have a kid, right? And you just want to make a 15 year stake so that by the time your kid is 21 or whatever, he might have a nice little sum, sum of money to uh, do whatever they want with. And your kid might love you for that. Who knows? But that's what I like when it comes to hex staking and using this chart right here is that Staking for life events, I find, gives me a lot more optimism and just a lot more excitement because it adds a layer to my life that you know is financially very rewarding for me personally. And then the final tip when it comes to hex staking, this is totally optional, guys, but if you already have hex, if you're already holding some liquid hex, and if you were planning on making a one-year, three-year, seven-year, or a 10-year stake, 
If you were planning on making a stake of these four lengths, consider using the Maximus Perpetual Contracts. What are these? Really simply put, these are just pooled together hex stakes that people made a couple of months ago. So these are just smart contracts where a bunch of people pooled their hex together. And basically these stakes are massive and they're earning a really high bigger pays better bonus that people like you or I would never be able to achieve on their own. So remember when it comes to hex, and I'll explain the bonuses in one minute, but when it comes to hex, bigger pays better and longer pays better, meaning the more hex you stake, the higher APY you'll get. Now for average Joes, you know, people like me and you, bigger pays better doesn't really affect our lives unless we pool it together. And that's exactly what these guys did. They simply made code-based smart contracts. These are all trustless, audited, safe, that essentially equate to a one-year hex stake, a three-year hex stake, a seven-year, and a 10-year. They're called Base, Trio, Lucky, and Desi. If you already have hex, consider swapping your hex for one of these perpetuals on Uniswap the app. And if you're not familiar with Uniswap already, well, you should be because you should have watched, you know, how to buy hacks and you should be familiar with Uniswap. But again, if you already had liquid hacks in your wallet, and if you planned on staking for one, three, seven, or 10 years anyway, you might as well enter and swap hacks for either base, trio, lucky, or Desi. Because let's say I wanted to make a three year stake. Let's say I think that the bull market's going to be back by 2025, 2026. So I was going to stake for three years anyway. Well, instead of making that three-year stake, I could just buy Trio. And what I'm buying is basically I'm buying into my share of a massive staking pool that got in at a lower T-share rate. So it's almost like taking a time machine and getting a better APY. Because remember, these stakes were made a couple of months ago. And those T-shares were locked in at a much lower rate. So they were able to get a lot more bang for their buck. Plus, I'm getting a lot more of that bigger pays better bonus. So... There are a lot of advantages, basically just making sure that I get a lot higher yield if I buy Trio than I would by myself making a three-year stake by myself today. And if this is all too complicated for you, feel free to ignore it. I just wanted to leave that option on the table. If you're a little bit more advanced and you understand you know, what derivatives are and the concept of pooling trustlessly. And again, if you were liquid and planning on staking Hex anyway for you know these time intervals, these are just an option for you. So that's a cool hex staking tip. I thought you might want to know. So what are hex shares? Okay, what are hex shares? Again, I'll post a link to my video above if you haven't already seen it, but really simply put, hex shares determine how much yield you get. And what determines how many shares you get is two things, how much you stake and your bonuses. So remember, let's say I want to stake 10,000 hex for 1,000 days. Well, I've got two bonuses working for me that get me more shares that in turn get me more yield. Those bonuses are longer pays better and bigger pays better. Now you can see here, because I'm staking for about two and a half, three years, a thousand days, longer pays better is paying me 5,400 effective hex. Okay. Now I want to be really clear about this. A lot of people get this wrong. So if you're listening right now, pay attention. Bonuses prob might not work like you think they work. Okay. The effective hex is not a real amount of hex. This is not a real number of hex. It's not as simple as, oh, I stake 10,000 hex. I get 15,000 hex back. Not that simple, okay? This is only used, effective hex is only used for calculating the number of shares you receive. I mean, read the tooltip, guys. That's why I'm saying read the tooltips. So effective hex is calculated from your longer and bigger pays better. And this effective hex dictates how many shares you'll get and how many shares you'll get over you know the number of days you serve determines how much yield you'll get. There's a lot of complexities to hex. The more the deeper you go down the rabbit hole, I'm going to try to keep it really simple. And I just want to explain that guys, longer pays better is almost always the bonus that's going to matter more for you than bigger pays better. Because look, you're staking a thousand days. I got, you know, 5,400 effective hacks more, which is buying me a lot more T-shares. Look at how much the T-shares go up if I add another thousand days. So from 1,000 days, to, I get 0.613 T-shares. On 2,000 days, I get 0.83 T-shares. That's significantly more T-shares. In fact, you get 20% extra bonus hex, effective hex, from the longer pays better bonus every year, similar to how CDs work in the real world. Now, but you'll notice that bigger pays better is giving me almost nothing. It's giving me 0 0.06 hex. That's basically nothing. And that's for staking 10,000 hex. What if I stake even a million hex? A million hex is a lot of hex, right? But if I'm staking a million hex, you can see that my longer pays better 
is way outweighing my bigger pays better. My longer pays better is giving me a 1 million bonus. My bigger pays better is only giving me a 666 bonus. So even if you're a pretty big holder, you know, longer pays better is almost always going to vastly outweigh bigger pays better. Bigger pays better doesn't really matter until you become a super large whale. Let's say you're staking a hundred million hex, maybe even a billion hex, right? That's when it starts to actually matter. But it was made that way on purpose so that whales don't have a crazy high advantage, right? And I just want to stress to you that you should probably be more concerned with longer pays better if you want to get more shares and get more yield. So when it comes to hex staking, the thing that's primarily in your control is the amount of time you're staking, not how much money you have, right? Because whether or not you're staking $500 worth of hex or $1,000 of hex or even $10,000 worth of hex, it's not going to matter relative to the longer pays better bonus. I hope that makes sense. So don't get too hung up with bigger pays better unless you're a super billionaire that's that's, you know, Elon Musk level million billionaire kind of guy. So the final question out of all this is why bother staking hex in the first place? Guys, why bother staking hex if it's not already clear? It's primarily three things in my point of view. It's the yield, it's the speculation, and then it's the psychological ability of saving myself from myself. So the yield, right? Let's start with number one. Why stake your hex? Well, you're earning yield, which is offsetting any potential losses, especially important in the bear market, and adding it and compounding to your gains when you eventually cash out you know, some number of years in the future. Yield is amazing. Yield offsets my losses and I get paid to wait out the bear market in style. Speculation is number two. A lot of people speculate in cryptocurrencies. I mean, it's pretty much the primary use case of crypto right now is to speculate. Let's not beat around the bush. A lot of people are speculating that on the next bull run in crypto, whenever that may be, whether it's one year, three years, five years from now, that Hex is going to pump very hard. A lot of people think this because it pumped so hard on the last cycle and there is such a thriving community behind it. Not to mention a myriad of other things like 100% uptime, never been hacked, it's true DeFi, it's making waves in social media, on-chain metrics are going up, there's new stakers every day, there's a ton of things to be bullish about, you know, there's a documentary on the way about Hex, it's going to come to Netflix or Hulu, I'm serious. Pulse Chain is right around the corner, Pulse Chain is going to massively give Hex way more attention. I could go on and on as to why people are bullish about Hex, but when it comes to speculation... My bets are on the fact that Hex is going to outperform most coins, probably. I mean, I really do believe that Hex will probably be the top in the top five performers for the next bull market cycle. It might even be the top one or two, dare I say. And finally, the behavioral changes that it's taught me and it's taught everybody else, the delay gratification and giving me something to look forward to. Also, when I say saving myself from myself, that means that it's saving me from having crazy panicked emotions and negative emotions because I just know that I'm locked up in a protocol that works, that's solid, that's probably going to make me more money in the future. Meanwhile, everything else in crypto is falling and crumbling around us. Centralized exchanges like FTX and Celsius get hacked all the time, left and right. It's nothing new. And cryptocurrency, you know, if you get it right, you can make life-changing money. If you get it wrong, you can literally lose all your money. And cryptocurrency is the highest appreciating asset class in the history of mankind. But it's also the most volatile asset class in the history of mankind. And so the price you pay for the potential of mad gains is extreme volatility. And I'll say that one last time. The price you pay for the mad gains is extreme volatility. Now, when Bitcoin went from 1200 bucks down to 200 bucks, I might have sold. I might have gotten scared and sold, even though looking back on it, right, hindsight's 2020. You could say, oh, if only I could buy Bitcoin at $1,000, you know, now it's $20,000. Easy to say that in hindsight. But when you're experiencing these drastic dips up and down, emotions come into it. And I'm not above it, right? I'm not better than my emotions. I know that I'm an emotional person. So I know that hex staking saves me from my own irrational behavior. It saves me from shaking myself out of what can potentially be life-changing generational wealth. And I truly believe that. And that is why I stake Hex and why a lot of other people do as well. Guys, if you like this video and you're brand new to crypto, get my course below, HexPassiveIncome.com. If you really like this video and you want to support the channel and you want to get a ton of other benefits like one-on-one -on -one questions answered in my private group, consider joining my Patreon. Patreon course, links below. Obviously, other than that, just like, subscribe, stake your Hex, keep calm, and stake on.